Three, two, one. Robotics, Robotics assemble. 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 That was beautiful. Uh, hi, everyone. Um, my name is Rod Watch. Um, I'm a business member of Saints Robotics. Um, I'm going to be hosting today. Um, this is our alumni podcast. And to get started, um, let's all go around and do some introductions. Um, so we'll do name, um, position, role you had on the team, um, and year, and what you're doing right now in college, so your major. So, yeah, whichever one you guys goes, wants to go first. Uh, hi, my name is Elaine. Um, I graduated from high school back in uh, June of 2022. Um, and so I am at Carnegie Mellon University right now studying electrical and computer engineering. Um, and that might give you a hint as to what I did on the team. Uh, I started out in programming, um, was programming me for a bit, and also did like stuff with drive team administration and some more drive teams. We had a lot of fun. Back in 2022. Yeah, no longer 2022. All right, um, I'm Nikhil. I also graduated in 2022. Um, I'm currently going to UW or University of Washington and I'm engineering undeclared, but uh, hopefully gonna go into um, electrical and computer engineering. Um, on the club, I was the uh, co-director of engineering as well as control systems lead uh, for the year before. And I was also the host of the podcast for a time. You, you might have heard this before now. Um, I'm at UW uh, intended for electrical and computer engineering. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> graduated with the Interlake class of 2022. Um, but on Saints, I was the control systems lead in the 2021-22 season and kind of did a little work for programming and then mostly control systems uh, for the next three years. Okay, so before we get into the deep questions, I have a little bit of a icebreaker <clears throat> question for you guys. So I, I want all of you guys to go around and share your favorite experiences from your time at Saints Robotics doing FRC. Um, as a freshman, I really like spending just a working on test year. This was our first year using Swerve back in 2019. Um, and so it was just really fun to see that project come together over the course of the build season. So, Yeah, um, one of my favorite parts um, of FRC is definitely just the competitions. I love just being in the pits and working on the robot or watching the games go. And it's I know it's really stressful being in the pits, working on the robots, especially if something broke and we have a comp like we have a match in like ten minutes. But that's you know it really gets my blood flowing, and that's that's what I really like about robotics. Um, yeah, there's something very satisfying about uh, even if it's chaotic, fixing things right before you have to. Um, a little less adrenaline inducing, but maybe more satisfying when it actually goes is getting through a match like without an issue. <laughs> Seeing an Auton go off and uh, hit all your shots and come out of the match and just go, we're good. Like We don't have something we need to work on right this second because we put in the work before. Um, and on a less technical note, probably being in a hotel room on any trip at like midnight and there's chocolate dessert for some reason and something is going on. I definitely agree with the competition part. Okay. I have a second icebreaker for you guys. Okay. And it's, it's more related to this year. What is your guys' thoughts on getting a first suit for our mascot and having our shortest member wear it? Um, I think that that'd be amazing. Um, we really needed that in the club. Uh, the more expensive the fursuit, the better, in my opinion. And we have to get the blue just right. You know, I want it to be a blue dog. Um, and then it better be holding a wrench. And yeah, like Blue's Clues. I want like a big Blue's Clues type dog holding 
like a comically large wrench. Uh, why the shortest member? I don't know. I guess so that it would be more of a mascot. I don't actually know why. I guess we just decided on the shortest member. I why think not? we want it made for someone who's like 5'10 to 6 feet. And then with the hat, they'll be even taller. And then we put them next to our shortest member for the like parade. And then what if the shortest member wears a wrench costume? <laughs> what, wait, you you guys you guys all know Varnica, right? Yeah. Yeah. She's the person our, we're having wear it. Oh, okay. But why not have a like a really big person wear it? And then you have like a huge dog and like a small wrench. Or like a huge dog and a little dog. Oh yeah, that works too. Multiple know, These are all good ideas. We I think we might have to think about it a little bit. I think yeah. we already have enough fursuit. What if we just get like a life size cardboard cutout of a picture of the fursuit and then we have someone carry it in front of them? I know. Okay, so I know that the ice has been broken. We can get into some of the deeper questions right now. So the first question I have is how has robotics shaped your interests and influenced your journey after high school? And so think about it for a little bit. And I don't know about after high school. Um, I joined a very similar types of robotics team at UW called ARU Dub. Um, so it's very, um, I think it's very similar to FRC, and a lot of members on there do FRC or did FRC. So I think um, if I didn't do robotics, I would not like look for an opportunity like that. And as well as just like in high school, I always thought I would come out and only want to do CS, but then after robotics, you know, that, that kind of changed. I wanted to do more like engineering type stuff. And that's what, like, I don't know, it just opened my horizons to different fields and what you can do in them. Yeah. Um, bam. Coming into high school, I, I was just kind of like generic STEM, maybe like math, physics, coding, something. Um, and then took physics for kind of the middle years and did robotics. And that really pushed me towards uh, first en just engineering in general, like as opposed to academia, more, you know, physics, math kind of um, academic pursuits because uh, you're like actually building something and having this construction challenge was really, really cool. Um, and then also having the control system subdivision was kind of the exposure to sensors and electrical hardware components as opposed to kind of the more common programming sides and uh, mechanical engineering side. Um, so that kind of opened my eyes to electrical uh, engineering as an option. Yeah, similar to Ryan and Nikhil, I think all three of us are easy. So like um, definitely learn, as I was learning about you know, programming, on robotics, I, I realized I wanted to know more about the sensors that I was using to program. And so that's how I got really interested in like the more electrical uh, side of things as well. Um, and yeah, after, so in college, I'm meeting a lot of people who also did it. So um, that also is sort of like a platform and a community that's kind of already there uh, because a lot of us have. And I see people like walking around campus occasionally wearing um, like first merch, whether it's like from their team or from a competition. And so, like, already I know that like people do that. Very, very interesting to see how you guys kind of had your journey shaped by FRC. Okay, uh, second question What were some of the challenges that you faced during robotics? Um, and how did you deal with them? A lot of them were like kind of practical slash logistical in that like we had to meet a deadline, like for instance, bag day back when it was still a thing in my freshman year. Like we had to really like plan carefully for that. Um because we had to decide how to allocate um, you know, who gets the robot and when, and back then we were building two, so that, you know, when we had to put our pump bot in the bag, we still had our practice bot. Um, and so it was like, 
there are a lot of sort of logistical slash like hurdles that we uh, like had to go over, um, which was like both stressful and fun. Um, and so like tag day is just one of those. Another thing I can remember, I guess like most of the problems are logistical, but um, basically like making sure that everyone is, you know, finishing their designs on time and like, you know, getting the robot ready for other sub teams, especially like for mechanical and uh, control systems, getting all their stuff done so that programming can get the bot as soon as possible. So th th that was mainly our problem because we'd like start building it and then we'd be like, oh crap, uh, where would we put the motors? That was a big thing um last year or when we were building the robot um we we started building everything and then and then we were like wait where do we put the motors and then uh we should have had that hindsight a long time ago but yeah that was, that was kind of funny at the same time it kind of like put us back like a week so yeah we just had to we probably should have made like a checklist or something to figure out if we had all these functionality do we have that this year? No, I, I think so. Mayhaps, yeah, possibly. Nice. Smiley faces are always uh, assuring. <clears throat> I, I'll take a slightly different tack since you've kind of already talked about a lot of the robot things. And um, honestly, personally, like a lot of the robot kind of deadline and technical issues were like challenging, but they're also just kind of fun and part of the job. Um, like, I think the things that I considered challenges more were things like, um, kind of personally getting started, finding, finding a spot where there was like a, a space where I could contribute and room for projects and people to contribute. So finding control systems, um, at the start and like figuring out, you know, when to show up, how say 2021 like getting outreach and just trying to keep people as engaged as we could when it was online and uh not a lot was going on so but that was the game nights or google meets or cad um that was probably the most challenging stint uh to me very very Adding back to your guys' experiences, I have a little bit of a question here. So for you guys who uh, have done, you know, robotics in college, what are the similarities and differences of college robotics and FRC? And what kind of clubs should students look into if they're interested in um, robotics in college? As an FRC student, I will definitely say look into how you can support FRC teams around you. Um, my first semester was busier than I had so I haven't really gotten for like competitions, events, teams uh, that I could help mentor and volunteer at. And that's definitely something that I look forward to doing uh, when I have it. Uh, One thing I can say is that if you're trying to do robotics in college, there are a lot of opportunities, like especially at UW, there are like many different types of like robotics clubs uh something that's similar to frc and some things that are essentially just water game there's like underwater robotics um build your own 3d printers as well as um you know similar to ro like frc just robot building robots for a competition or like or like shooting at each other or something so as well as just like um i don't know and also the a lot of the people that are going to be on there uh, are probably like people who have done FRC or who know of FRC. So having um, the FRC like, you know, background will just kind of help you like, you know, get into them or like, um, I don't know, just like meet new people and make a lot of friends. Yeah, I think uh, if you have interest or skills in this space, there's plenty of options and uh kind of universities operate just at a bigger scale than all the high schools um especially if you go to some of the bigger ones so there's kind of sub interests and different programs beyond just you know having a first program or a vex program uh at your school so i can go mention for uw the underwater Club, 
but there's ways to take that kind of wherever wherever you want are there any like big standardized leagues that are like between all the colleges or is it kind of just Robo uh robomasters is one because we actually have this giant tank of water um <laughs> one of our high bays uh and the robo sub club uses that and i know they compete uh with other teams colleges I think there's a couple, there's like a number of small, like networks that are smaller than FRC, but that have, you know, a dozen, two dozen, three dozen colleges. And if you go somewhere that doesn't have one, they'd probably be pretty excited to get your team in. I see. Formula racing. Um, I yeah. talking to one of like Saints alumni uh, who did formula racing with the um, And like, from what I can tell, it's pretty widespread, at least across colleges in the U.S. Um, but I also like, have a couple friends who joined that one, unfortunately. Um, but what they do is a lot, a lot of things. Uh, very similar to the That seems very fun. Okay, so third question. And this is really, really useful for, because we're about to go into build season in less than a month. What mm -hmm. is some... Um, engineering or general advice you can give to our members for build and competition season? <clears throat> one thing that one of the CMU alumni kind of showed me recently was that like, the people management is just important as the project management. It's almost like PM stands for people manager. Um, and so like once you sort of team members kind of knowing what they need to do and how to do it and giving them like a pathway to that goal the project itself will fall into place um, and I think like especially at the right beginning of the season it's overwhelming like, where we go what do we do um, I think regrouping and making sure that everyone is kind of up to speed with like what's going on and what they're interested in doing, what they want to do, um, what they think they need help on, uh, just kind of getting all of that in place, uh, I think will set up for success uh, later in the season. Yeah, I have to agree with that. Make sure you divide and conquer, right? You want to make sure everyone has tasks to do. And as well, um, tell your build and any member, right? Um, um that you need to have intent behind your design don't make a part this big just because it looks good on the cad make it a specific size and like make sure you have a reason for making a specific size right if you want this tubing to be eight inches long why not you can ask the question why not six inches is it going to be too small or is it not going to be able to handle the weight um stuff like that um that was really drilled into me when i was making designs in college so um, I would, he would, they would ask me questions like, oh, why did you put, um, I don't know, like weight reduction here? And I would just tell them because it looked nice or like, because that's not necessary. And then they would, they'd be like, okay. And they would make me redesign the part with better um, design intent. So I had to remake this like really simple base plate like three times because I couldn't explain why I wanted to do all of this parts. And then I didn't use, I guess, like, good design intent or like good design while doing it so like make sure that you know why you're doing certain parts because that way you can have a better product but at the same time this takes a lot of time to do if you want um all your parts to be like that so i understand if you speed up it's gonna lose a little bit of that but i know it's just something good to be uh remember yeah um following up on that a little bit i think just know your priorities like think about what Parts, what parts and functionalities are essential and that you want to focus on and devote resources to because you can't do everything, um, but kind of know what your targets are and priorities. And then, especially at the scale Saints is reaching, um, you know, you don't have to have everybody working on the same thing. Um, so kind of divide and conquer, like you said, you can run, you know, prototypes and other ideas or work on different parts at once. Um, and especially as you build up uh, kind of organizational experience that should improve. 
Um, and then I guess lastly, like kind of having the time crunch of build season, there is also an element of uh, just get things done. Like if there's something that you need to get done, but you know it's waiting on some other component to work on rather than just kind of waiting for that think about like what is something else you can do or how can we move that stopgap the rate limiting step ahead what a really good advice for different aspects but i have a little bit of a challenge for you guys can you guys synthesize all of your advice down to three words mm. Mm -hmm. all right you have to give me a second on this one Take your time. Just did. Hmm. Okay, I think one of them would just be divide and conquer. That's a pretty good one. That's three words. Um, he said three words, right? Yeah, I said three words. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> That's pretty good. Um, Okay, another one. Design, collaborate, build. What's that? that that's, a, that's a good one. Yeah. That's, that's a good one. one. Design, Very collaborate, loud. build. A lot of bangers from the queue here. Come on, other other alumni. I feel like mine kind of came down to like prioritize, delegate, and execute, but it's not quite as snappy. I'm working on that one. Oh, that one. I'm just like more intellectual. Like, yeah, it's harder to write that on the whiteboard. Yeah, exactly. Julie is right. Ryan uses his brain too much. Um, divide and conquer really like kind of summarizes what I would say. I'm trying to think of like examples. Like, uh, Use brain smart. <clears throat> that's one. Yeah. Print smart. Um, what smart? Robotics Works. is hard. <laughs> that that's the best one, I think. Robotics is hard. Anything else? I mean, here you can go through and cut all these down into like a just a mon montage instead. Yeah. That we could share these at the next meeting. Three yes. Words. People, product, process. It's the three P's of robotics. That's true. That's true. Okay. Okay. I think we have some good three word, three word answers to this. So, got one last question for you guys, which is, um, what advice would you give to the upperclassmen right now who are trying to figure out their career goals and what their interests are? Well, what do you like doing? That's you have to ask yourself some questions like, oh, what do you like doing? Um, do you like? Uh, oh, okay. Um, I guess you can. Uh, Julie put something in the chat. I don't think and that's allowed. Very interesting things in the chat. Very, right? very interesting things in chat. <laughs> okay. Okay. Line with each other. Um, find the thing that you can gravitate towards and like spend your time on and enjoy spending your time on should be the thing that you're supposed to be doing. I think what I'd like it to be is, you know, what's something, what's the field or job that you can imagine yourself in that's like, that you think like that's 
cool or you know that that's going to motivate me to kind of stick with this um which is not always easy <laughs> and if that doesn't like if you're having trouble with that that's okay also um kind of what's the thing that you're you know okay to spend the next couple of years uh even just short term that you like that you like or uh find satisfying to learn about and that would kind of motivate you to go deeper in it and it's okay to have things that would be cool and you're just like that's not interesting <laughs> like for me that's not gonna work but there's something else that is yeah and also it's good to remember that um if you don't figure it out don't worry just like um, I'm pretty sure Kevin Ross has said this some time ago where he like changed his major like five times uh, before he figured out what he wanted to do. So like you have time, um, you can maybe figure out maybe a field that you really like or like, oh, I want to I want to do STEM. Right. And then maybe hone down later or I want to do film or something mm -hmm. like that. You got to do this again in like three years because I got no idea right now. <laughs> yeah, same. Yeah, you got to come back. Uh, I, I right now I'm just like, oh, I can do an engineering job, and then I look and I see like, oh, rocket science sounds kind of nice, and then like I go back and forth. But yeah, I see. So there's a lot of decision making here. But yeah. you know, besides just you know career and stuff, um, what are the other things that you know doing FRC has helped you just in life and in general? Mm. It's helpful, like, doing, like, engineering robots for four years, or maybe three years, it's, it. um, it's kind of taught you a new way to think about problems, approach problem solving. So, like, when you see, uh, you know, something of yours breaks, uh, you might, like, have a better idea on like how it works or how to figure out how it works um, and like try to fix it which is always fun to figure and stuff um, and um, also it helps with I think like communicating with other human beings because what um, especially being the program other leadership positions it's Kind of, it's giving me practice on getting into other people's minds and like trying to see like how their thought process works, what what their ideas are, um, and then like collaborating with that. Uh, because at first, just like talking to each other and like, sharing ideas, a lot easier than it's done um, because English is hard. STEM major moment. <laughs> yeah. Did you know that they make us take an English class, like a very engineering based English class, because STEM majors don't know how to like make their work like legible? Technical writing. Yeah. yeah Handwriting as well. No, and another thing I learned from robotics is just like a very useful set of skills, right? Like, um, as Delaney was talking about, like, um, I don't know, fixing whatever you have or like building stuff. I like now, I don't know, like I just have this urge of like building random things. Like last summer, Ryan and I were, uh, I was really bored and I, and I proposed an idea over a discord call if we wanted to like make a trebuchet in my backyard. Um, so then over a course of a week, we just uh, made a trebuchet and then started flinging, um, tennis balls into my neighbor's yard we lost like five tennis balls did the neighbor get mad i, I don't think they noticed i think there's an orange in there too yeah and an orange we threw an orange too because it was like it was a good size yeah good size interesting okay so yeah. finally to end off the podcast um just i wanted to hear if you guys have any just general messages or any last words of advice to the viewers of this podcast just anything you want to say I've had many good learning this semester. Engineering is supposed to be fun. And at least in, in my opinion, it is. There's a lot of stuff that's just around you. And like once you kind of step into the engineering world, you start to see the world a little bit differently. Uh, because like so much.
much of the stuff that you use on a daily basis has been engineered. Um, and so it gives you a really fun perspective uh, on life. And yeah, robotics is hard. One of our, like, what do you want to say? Um, but it's hard to find, I think, is what either Woody Flowers or Dean Keenan said during one of the talks. It's like the hardest fun you've ever had. Um, and that is definitely true. I think FRC is something that I got a lot out of after I, once I kind of just threw myself into it. Like, it took, I got the most out of it after I kind of committed and liked it and spent, ended up spending a lot of time and interest on it. Um, but I'd also say find something that makes you want to throw yourself into it. Like, don't do it just because you can, but uh, like, there, it reached a point where I was like, you know, this, like Delaney said, this is fun and interesting. And uh, like, I want to know more about it, even just for myself reading Chief Delphi and that kind of thing. Um, so I found that with robotics. And if you do too, that's a way to get a lot more out of it to get like experience and kind of develop instincts and thinking related to FRC. Um, and if that's something else, do that for whatever that something else is. No, I have to agree with these guys here. They are much smarter than I am. Uh, my advice would be very similar. Just, you know, um, first of all, do what you like. Um, if you don't like robotics, and uh, like maybe either change from engineering to like something else or like, um, I don't know. And if you don't like what you're doing right now, try different things. And I think that is something that I like doing is I like trying a lot of different things and then seeing what sticks with me. It's a very shotgun approach. It takes a lot of time, but it's very fun um, once you figure out what you want it to do. Um, as well as um, for the people that are going into college, um, co classes are going to be harder or some classes are going to be much harder than uh, you're used to. But you just have to like remember like the, the future, right? Like that's what helps me sometimes. I just like take take a look into, oh, what can I do in a year or so with this information and trying to see where it applies into my normal life. Um, yeah, that's that's what I like to do. I tried doing that with integrals and math. It didn't really work that well. I was just like, but some days I just look at a mug and I was like, what is the volume of the cup of this mug that it would displace? And then And then I realized that I am now an engineer and a nerd and I move on with my life. <laughs> gee, gee, who watches this? Mostly, mostly robotics people probably, right? Pick, just pick something and learn as much as you can about it. Uh, yeah. Even if that's doing volume integrals. <laughs> Last like, piece of advice, especially to current robotics students. Um, all of us came from like an engineering background within the team. We were doing engineering in college. So please, please, please do outreach for your team. Do fundraising for your team. Um, I know, Ron Lodge, you started on, like, the programming team, um, and, like, now you're on business, uh, and so it is definitely great to diversify yourself, uh, while you're in high school, um, and, again, engineers are bad at English, so, like, talking to parents, to sponsors, to elementary school kids, whatever, at all these events is a very good practice, um, because it helps you Sort of, especially when you're talking to little kids, it helps you boil down some of the engineering concepts that you're working on. And if you have a robot next to you, um, you can like, you know, figure out a way to like communicate it such that it makes sense to the um, And I think that is a very val very valuable skill that you can learn within your time here. Yeah. Um, anyone else got any? critical life-changing advice to the viewers of this podcast? No, I think that's it. Okay. That's it. Okay, I think I think, it's, uh, I think that's really all I got for you guys. First of all, thank you so much for coming on this podcast, taking time out of your busy college schedule to come talk to us at Saints Robotics. Appreciate it a lot. Um, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> it's awesome being on here. Um, why do we have school tomorrow? But yeah, that's, we, a, that's a different issue. <laughs> yeah, I don't want to go 
back to college yeah, tomorrow. tomorrow too. Yeah. January yeah. 3rd, we're on the BSU schedule. Finals yeah. week is it's, the same as their last week. And yeah. We're, we're back. Technically, we have three weeks because we don't have instruction on finals week, but it's finals week. So Bro, it's, it's, that, that counts as a week. Yeah. Delaney, when do you go back? The day after Martin Luther King Day. Bruh. Do you have the spring break? Yes, it's a week. So is ours. This is like, you know, we yeah, don't. No, we, we, we don't. <laughs> and we get out in we June. We just have a really long summer. Well, we get out in June, so I don't know. Oh, about that. okay. Just it's like, a lot of interesting schedules. You, you can cut this part out. We're just complaining. Yeah, I think we should. I think it's time to do a robotics break. And... I think. All right. <laughs> say, this, is a, yeah, okay. this is a vital part of the podcast. Um, and all of our robotics seniors, you guys are totally prepped to go to college. Like, you'll be fine. You got, Yeah, you guys are going to be chilling. Exactly. All right. Are you guys ready? Okay. Three, two, one. Robotics, robotics break. 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 <laughs>